David Vorak, Vice President of Starwood Hotels. Welcome, David. Thank you, Bill. Good to it's be here. It's a pleasure to have you at the cafe. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, let me just start at the 30,000-foot level, which is the macro view from your perspective of, of how 2013 looks in January of this year. How, how, does it, how does the year shape up? Actually, it's shaping up very nice, and it's, it's much better than we think uh, 2012 was. With a lot of the economic uncertainty in 12, there was a lot of holding back on spending in the meeting side of an event side and catering side. We see that freeing up in 2013. And is it, from your perspective, freeing up on all levels, more meetings, uh, more services? Were people booking meetings but, but cutting back on services, or, or is everything looking better? Yeah, it's interesting because I think the, there'll be more meetings out there and more events out there. We're uh, uncertain at this time whether the budgets have actually moved up from where they were in 2012, which we looked at were really flat for a lot of people. So the expenses went up overall, and that you know was some struggle, you know, challenges for a lot of these meeting professionals that they had flat budgets, but other costs were going up. Right. So it may be more meetings, even with the flatter budget, just that, just more activity. Correct. You'd mentioned to me it was interesting because I hadn't thought about this. You'd mentioned because your part of your title is convention services, that the word convention is actually going away. Is that is that the case? Yeah, you'll see that within the industry that most of uh, the big hotel brands have moved to different titles. We're actually doing that at Starwood, moving away from convention services to you know, meetings and event managers and giving them training to really focus on what's happening today, which is smaller meetings, a lot more transactions, uh, which is a challenging piece of their uh, job today. So f fewer of the large, what we would have called conventions, and more, more, more smaller yeah, we're seeing meetings. smaller, uh, right. it's absolutely right, faster, uh, there's shorter in time frame, uh, and they're shorter from the standpoint that they're more regionalized. So they're doing a lot more regional stuff, as opposed to what we've seen you know, in the past where you have these bigger annual meetings. Let's, let's talk just for a minute about process, and then and I want to talk about value in just a minute. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to process, I know f from what I've heard that even, even for it's a chain of events. The planners are having trouble getting the event attendees to confirm earlier, and as a result, they're coming to you later in the process and, and right. bidding out the work later. So how does that impact you from a hotelier's perspective, uh, getting these short turnaround requests for cost? Right, and, and the shorter booking windows has really been a challenge for us. We've adjusted to it because it's been a kind of a, uh, I don't want to say a trend because I think it's here to stay, you know, for the last few years. So we've kind of adjusted to that as best we can. Where the challenge comes in is the transactions are shorter in, so you have less time for planning. Uh, with that, you have to worry about what staffing you have in, in place at the property. And the other aspect is how many transactions are happening because they're smaller. So the event managers at this point are handling many more transactions in a very short time frame, having to get back to numerous people. Uh, and a lot of these transactions are happening not at a professional meeting level. They're coming from the administrative assistance of VPs of marketing at corporations. So a little bit more of teaching has to happen from the event service managers at that point. And, I, and, and what's interesting is, as you said earlier, this is not uh, unusual. This may be the way it's going to be. But planners, it would seem to me, would need to know that while it may be the way it's going to be, there are some risks involved in this and there, there are some things that they need to keep in mind as they're doing this. Absolutely, and I think the biggest risk that you know is going to happen as they move forward is there's not a lot of capacity or not a lot of hotels that have been built over the last five years. So it takes you anywhere from three to five years to build a new meeting-sized hotel. So you're not going to see a lot of them come on the market. What that has is less capacity for the planners to book into. So the longer you wait, the more opportunity you have to not get the space you had, had seen. And we saw a lot of that in 2012. You know, it's funny because you just triggered a thought in my mind that um, de development of hotels, of the, of the footprint and the physical plant takes time. Yes. But everything else is changing so fast. So uh, technology and, and, as you say, shorter, faster meetings. So how, how can a hotel even keep up since your, your building schedule, your updating schedule is, 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 has such a long wheelbase? Right. And I think the key, what a lot of people don't realize, it's you'll see a lot of the niceties. So you see the cosmetic upgrades, the guest rooms and meeting space. But the real challenge right now within the industry is the infrastructure. And a lot of these buildings, obviously 40, 50 years old, um, you, you have that infrastructure cost. But the other piece that's interesting is technology. Trying to keep up with the amount of uh, technology you need within the hotel and the infrastructure, especially on high-speed internet, is, is amazing because everybody is on three or four devices in our hotels today and that eats up bandwidth and you have to put a lot of money in that people don't see behind the scenes, you know, really helps them have a better experience within the property. 
planters can look at you as a property, as a physical plant, uh, but when you talk about the objective of the meeting and, and the kinds of, do, do you get involved str at the strategic level with planners or do you wish you'd get involved at that level so that by the, by the time you get it, it may be, okay, I just want, this is an RFP, I just want you to tell me what's the price for A, B, and C. You don't even get a chance to talk about what's the objective of the meeting. Or right. do you get that opportunity? No, it's part of the training that you know, we have at Starward for our meetings and event managers is really focused on what is that objective? What do they want to achieve? Do they have a corporate social responsibility give back that they need to do? What is the entire piece of the meeting so that we can work with the planner to really have the tools that they need, to have the room sets that they need that would work for them, and really focus on what is that ROI piece that they want out of it. And you know, today what's happening is the attendees are shifting. It's a younger generation mm -hmm. coming in, they're expecting a whole lot different feel in, in these, uh, these rooms, similar to what they've experienced as they went to uh, you know, college and universities in a different environment. Do, do RFPs have that component in it, or you're, you're training your people to say, ask for it? It's definitely, you have to ask for it. The it, planners, want, normally speaking, you won't get that. No. You have to do that, or you have to have the knowledge from, you know, a sister property, uh, you know, that, and you have to ask the right questions, you know, to make sure that you're pulling the information that you can say, hey, oh, I know what I'm going to do for them, uh, and this will work. So, you know, then you can at least present it in that manner. So the more information you've have about the meeting, the better off you are. Uh, we're going to wind it down, David. I just have one last area, and I'm just going to, if I had a room full of, uh, let's work up the chain. If I had a room full of AV providers right now, what would be your advice to them, given what we've talked about, short lead times? Is, what can they do to make your life simpler as a, as a hotelier? I, I think, you know, it's the, the same thing, information. Providing as much information, and hopefully they're asking the right questions of the uh, planner, as well as the service manager, so they're not making decisions that morning or on site to really go that one step further to ask the question that would help them either have the right equipment in, change the equipment, right. or give another suggestion so that we're not scrambling at the last minute. Okay. And if I had a room full of planners, what would you say, please, please, please? <laughs> if you could just, what, what would you say? It, it's just give us the information. And I, that's probably been said for years and years, but it, it's more so today than ever before because of the, the booking is so close in. The more information we have, the more information we can provide them to say, this is what works for us here. And then trust your event service professional. You know, those are the ones that know the building, know the staff, know what works, and they can make sure that as long as they know your business objective, they'll put you in the right direction. And if I had a room full of planners, and they were talking about hoteliers like you, what would be, in your mind, the one thing they'd say about hoteliers? Well, I think for a lot that of They'd time, like you to change, but. Yeah, yeah, I think they just want to, one, understand where the, what their costs are, um, and we try very hard to be transparent in most cases where we can. The other aspect is for um, them to get back to them. They want to make sure that the you know, event service person is getting back to them in a timely manner in the manner that they want to communicate in. And we work very hard with making sure that we at least have, if you're running around on the floor with another group, that you at least get back to the planner that needs information and get back to them uh, in the timely manner to say, this is when I can get back here. We've also created a lot of online tools that answer a lot of the questions that 24-7, 365, as opposed to having to have somebody via email answer you or by the phone. That's a help, that's a help. If only the world were a perfect place. Yes, thanks. Thanks, David, very much. Thank you, Bill. We've been speaking with David Vorak, Vice President of Starwood Hotels. Come back to the Inspiration Cafe, where we'll be speaking with more experts soon.